Hi everyone, this is Kevin Breeze here, and I recently upgraded from the iPhone 8 Plus to the iPhone XS Max. Now overall, I'm very pleased with the upgrade, and I do think there's a lot of benefits that came along with upgrading to the XS Max. But in this video, I wanted to highlight some of the things that I feel are a downgrade by switching from the iPhone 8 Plus to the XS Max, and some of those things are things that you wouldn't expect. So without further ado, let's get started. So one of the first downgrades that I noticed when using the iPhone XS Max is that the speakers don't seem to be as good as they are on the iPhone 8 Plus. Now this was disappointing because I paid nearly $1,200 after tax for this device. And really the biggest issue with the speakers is that when you have them at full blast, the sound just sounds a little bit tinny. It doesn't sound quite as good as it does on the iPhone 8 Plus. And it still sounds probably better than most smartphones out there, but it's just a downgrade, which is a little bit disappointing. Now I have some copyright free music here that I'm gonna play, and maybe you can get an idea of how this sounds through the video, or maybe not, but here you go. So the problem is, is that when you have it at full blast, yeah, the audio just sounds a little tinny, it doesn't sound quite as rich as it does in the 8 Plus, and it doesn't seem like there's as much bass. Now, I use the phone at full blast sometimes when I'm taking a shower and I need background music, or if maybe I'm doing just really anything else and I have the phone at full blast. Now, thankfully, when I have the phone at kind of medium volume, it sounds great. So if I just want to sit on the couch and watch a YouTube video, or uh, lay in bed and watch a YouTube video, or whatever, it sounds fine, and the speakers are definitely usable. I do think, though, that there was a slight downgrade, though, from speaker quality from the iPhone 8 Plus to the iPhone XS Max, and it is disappointing. So hopefully this is something that can be fixed with a software update from Apple. Another downgrade with switching from the iPhone 8 Plus to the iPhone XS Max is that we still have this really awkward way of accessing the control center. Now, on the iPhone 8 Plus, you would access the control center by swiping up from the bottom, and that's really convenient because usually if you're using the device with one hand, your hand is already towards the bottom of the device, so it's really accessible to reach that feature. But on the iPhone XS Max, just like the previous iPhone X, you have to actually swipe up from the top to access that control panel, and it's not really a huge deal, but if you're using the device with one hand, it is pretty difficult to kind of reach up there. And you really need a second hand to get up there. So it would have been nice if maybe Apple at least offered an option where you could move the area or the area on the screen where you'd swipe from to access that panel. Maybe it would be on the right side or something or the left side where you swipe over and after doing that, then the drop down comes down. I think that would have been a nice thing to see and it's again not a huge issue but it is in general a kind of a, a downgrade from the iPhone 8 Plus because it just is a little bit more difficult to reach it from the top. Another thing too is that I have decently large hands I guess but I can only imagine people with tiny hands how difficult it is for them to reach up top here. And the other thing too is that this phone is even bigger than the iPhone 10 from last year so it only makes the problem worse. Another thing that I kind of am disappointed with with the iPhone XS Max is the display. Now it is a great display, don't get me wrong. It's, it's better than most phones out there, that's for sure. But I feel like Apple really nailed it with their LCD displays, like the display on the iPhone 8 Plus, and I don't think that there's an improvement, and if anything there might be a little bit of a downgrade with the OLED display on the iPhone XS Max. The problem is, is that the display looks kind of drab, it's not very bright, and it doesn't really matter whether I turn True Tone on or off, the display still just kind of looks kind of unexciting. And I really don't see any upgrade here with the display on the iPhone XS Max over the iPhone 8 Plus. Another interesting thing that I noticed about the display with the iPhone XS Max is that based on the angle that you're looking at it, it has like a different color. So I think that's kind of a thing that comes with having an OLED display, is that it does look different based on the angle. But for example, if I look at it on this angle, it's a little brighter. But if I look at it straight on, it's not as bright. And the same thing happens when True Tone is off. It still looks different based on the angle that I'm looking at it with. And I've used other OLED displays in the past on other phones, and I've noticed the same thing. So in general, I think that's just something that comes with the technology. And that's not something that I noticed on the iPhone 8 Plus. 
Now both the iPhone XS Max and the iPhone 8 Plus come with 64 gigabytes of storage as the default minimum option. But I really think that for the amount of money that I paid for this phone, and I know they disclosed it ahead of time so I knew what I was buying, but I think for the amount of money that I paid for this device, they really should have had like 128 gigabytes as the minimum storage option. I just think for the amount of money I paid for this thing, they should have offered more storage as the minimum option. Especially nowadays with the way apps are and how apps are growing in size and everything, it's, they're using more space in your phone. And it's funny because if you think about it, Apple makes more money if people buy more apps. But if you run out of storage on your phone, then you can't buy as many apps. So at the end of the day, Apple loses out by having a lower amount of storage on their devices. Because really, if Apple offered more space on the iPhone XS Max, then people would buy more apps, they would download more videos and different things like that. And at the end of the day, it would just make the company more profit. Another complaint, and this is really something that could easily be fixed in a software update, but I know that everybody wants this, is a way to see the battery percentage up in the top corner of the phone. Right now, if you want to see the battery percentage, you have to pull down the control center, which is fine. It's not a big deal, but it's just a little thing that literally everybody wants, but Apple hasn't implemented yet. And it's already been a year since we've seen this with the iPhone 10, and Everybody wants the battery percentage, but Apple's not giving it to us. I don't know why. It doesn't cost them anything. They just would have to kind of change things up a little bit to throw in that percentage somewhere up at the top. Another thing I've noticed in comparison to the iPhone 8 Plus is the battery seems to drain quicker on the iPhone XS Max. Now, I've only used the device for 24 hours, so it's hard for me to really judge on that, but it just does seem like it drains faster. So that's just something I wanted to throw in this video just to kind of let you know about that. And the last thing, and this is kind of my personal problem, I guess, but iTunes was a nightmare to use when setting this up. Now, there were some good things when I set up this device and transferred everything over from my iPhone 8 Plus. It was really nice that when I turned on the phone, there was a little pop-up that said that since my old iPhone was next to it, I could quickly transfer over a lot of information, like my Wi-Fi settings and things like that. That was great. It was super easy to do that. But when it came to backing up my old phone and then putting it on iTunes and then plugging this in, there were just a, a variety of different issues that I ran into. The first thing was that my version of iTunes was outdated, so I had issues with uh, getting this device connected to it because I didn't know what the iPhone XS Max is. So I had to upgrade iTunes and then, my, and then my computer ran out of storage space, so then I couldn't really upgrade iTunes. So then I had to switch over to my other laptop and try to do it through that instead. And really, again, it's my issue, it's really my problem, and I kind of brought it upon myself, but I wish there just was an easier way to transfer everything over. I couldn't really transfer it over on iCloud because then I'd have to pay for the iCloud storage space, I'm pretty sure. So the best way to do it was to connect my old device to the computer, transfer everything over, plug this in, transfer over transfer everything over to here. But it just ended up just taking me forever. I mean it took me like an hour and a half. I don't really know how much there is that Apple can do about that. I think maybe if they just offered more free storage on iCloud, especially since we're paying so much for the hardware nowadays, that would be nice if they just did that. But in general, it, was, it wasn't a big issue. I made it work and eventually I was able to transfer all my stuff over to my new phone. But again, this concludes some issues, some drawbacks, some disadvantages that I noticed with the iPhone XS Max in comparison to the iPhone 8 Plus. But all in all, I really do like the iPhone XS Max. I do recommend it. I mean, it is expensive. If you don't really care about how much you're spending on a phone, then I think that this is a good option for you. And there are other phones out there that are cheaper that do really just as much as the iPhone XS Max does. But these are just some of the little things that I noticed that maybe Apple can improve on or maybe you just need to know as a consumer before upgrading to the iPhone XS Max. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Again, I like this phone. I really do. I'm not, I don't hate it. I, I'm not, and I'm not a sheep either. So, you know, I, I'm kind of a centrist when it comes to Apple versus the competition. But this is just my opinion. This is what I noticed with the phone. So I don't want to make anyone mad who's watching this video. But thanks for watching. This is Kevin Breeze here. Subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.